Uh, Mr. Fraser, thank you very much for being here this afternoon. Um, it's good of you to appear before the committee. Um, you've spoken quite a lot there about process and procedures. Uh, indeed, you spoke at the Finance Committee in June 2021 about your um, belief that process and procedure is the way we should do business. Um, I assume you are, as the most senior civil servant in the country, you are an expert in process and procedure. I want to ask you, have you at any stage briefed ministers, senior advisors and um, uh, I suppose senior politicians on the importance of process and procedure when it comes to appointments? That's my first question. Um, well, I suppose I'd answer that in, in, in two ways, uh, Senator. Uh, the, you know, the Cabinet Handbook and, and the, the material that ministers are given when they take office and the first cabinet meeting of every government contains all the process and procedure. And then I do, of course, from time to time, speak to ministers. They might have questions for me about process or procedure. Uh, I might have advice on how a thing works. So, um, I mean, you know, people, I, I think, understand what the processes and procedures are. They're, they're, not, they're not terribly complicated, um, to be fair. Okay, uh, thank you for that. Um, now, I, I assume as the... Uh, uh, most senior civil servant advising the Taoiseach and the Cabinet. I assume you have meetings on a weekly or more frequent basis with government advisers, uh, the shift to Cabinet, um, perhaps ministers. And I'm sure that you're well used to a situation where 12th hour issues uh, come before the Cabinet, say a couple of hours before a Cabinet meeting, something urgent comes up that you have to deal with. Um, Two questions here. Do you have a role in adjudicating whether something can be deferred to the next cabinet meeting because it's not urgent? And secondly, with respect to the Zappone appointment, um, did you not feel that, look, this really hasn't gone through the process and procedures we need to do. We need to delay this for uh, a couple of days. I agree with you, by the way, with what you say. At the time the decision was made, this was not a major item of discussion, but the, it's the little things that get us every time. So I'd be interested to know what you think about that. Um, I, I, I don't meet with the government advisors, um, Senator. They, the, 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 the government advisors who are political appointees, they, they have a meeting every week where they do, if you like, political stuff. Um, my role, obviously, I, I, I'm involved in, in, in government business. I do go to the um, the leaders meeting, uh, as you'd call it colloquially, it's actually a cabinet meeting, government coordination. That, that happens most weeks and I, I attend that uh, for most of it, not all of it. I don't get involved in, in, in party political stuff or, or any of that, so, so I, I'm not maybe as involved as, as, as you might think in some, in some aspects. And, and each government is different, of course, uh, for all sorts of reasons. Um, in terms of a role on deferral, I mean, if I, if I thought a thing wasn't, wasn't uh, ready, I, I would certainly advise the Taoiseach uh, if I thought it wasn't ready. I wouldn't allow a thing be done uh, if, if, if procedure wasn't followed. Now, there is, a, there is an urgency procedure, of course, and I mean, it, ultimately the Taoiseach is, is the person who decides what's, what comes to Cabinet, not me. Um, in, in terms of this particular situation, um, like the, the procedure was followed. There was a memo circulated um, four days before the Cabinet meeting indicating that there'd be ambassadorial appointments and a special envoy on the agenda for the following Tuesday. Um, the minister was to bring the names to the meeting. The minister brought the names to the meeting. So there's no procedural um, problem there. The problem, as, as everybody knows, is that um, the Taoiseach wasn't aware of this. But, but that's, that's not a problem with the, with the procedure. That's just a, a mistake. Uh, and that mistake has been uh, acknowledged and apologised for. You were aware of it before the Cabinet meeting. Did you not feel the need to advise the Taoiseach? No, I, I, well, I, I didn't speak, to be honest with you, no. I, 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 assumed, I assumed everything was in order. OK. Um, Mr Fraser, you're a very well accomplished individual. Uh, and uh, you came before that Cabinet meeting as well with respect to your appointment as an ambassador. Um, the allegation before this committee and the allegation in the public domain is that this country is bedogged with jobs for the boys. Um, did you go through a process whereby you applied 
were interviewed by the top-level Civil Service Appointments Committee with respect to your own post uh, as ambassador. It seems to me that you discussed it with the Taoiseach and uh, the minister, and everybody said, ah, yeah, you're doing a great job, can't keep you on here, but look, we're going to give you a nice little number in London. I know, that's not a matter of this committee, Senator Crockwell. I, I think uh, it's as fair enough. As you, as you well know, because it was broached before at this committee. Uh, well, now, in fairness, where you where, where have the Zappone gate sitting front and centre in front of us. And we have a senior member of the civil service who was appointed to a foreign office, a, a, an ambassador's role, without, it appears, any public competition, without, it appears, any uh, appearance before the top-level civil servants appointments committee. And I think that. that this committee is entitled to an answer. We can't put but Zippone in, in, in a cocoon and forget about the other two appointments that were made but at that meeting. It's a completely different process. But uh, what was the process? Mr Fraser. Um, so, uh, don't know where to go with that, Senator. Um, effectively, from my point of view, as I said, under, under the terms of my original appointment as, as Secretary to the Government, Secretary of the Department of the Taoiseach, when my term is up, my, my terms of appointment are that I would transfer to another position or retire or go into an international organisation. So this is a, this is a, it's a transfer. Um, and so it's a reassignment for me within the civil service. It's, it's not a promotion um, or anything like it. Uh, I, I, I note your characterisation of this. I, 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 I think there are easier places to go than, than London um, at the moment. Um, but um, However, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe, uh, maybe I've got a, ha a handy number there, but I'm not, I'm not sure that's uh, a good characterisation of, uh, of any, the job. Any, any event, Mr. Fraser and, and Senator Crockwell, I'm, I'm not going to allow. This well, look, I mean, Mr. Issue, Fraser has been the process very, is entirely different. No, Mr. Uh, Fraser has been very straight and I'm, honest, and, and he has been helpful. He, given given yeah, his experience, but, I would think he's the ideal man for the job in London. Yeah, well, that's not the point. Right. The point is, we cannot ring fence the Zappone appointment and say if. We was done on a jobs for the boys basis, and then we have two senior civil servants that were appointed to ambassador, ambassadorial no, roles. I, I have they to should say, have been I, interviewed. No, no. They should have applied for it. It should have been an open, uh, advertised position. I have I, to say, Senator Crockwell, that that there, there are two there are two distinctly different processes in the matter of the appointment from within the civil service of an ambassador and the appointment of a special envoy, which is precisely the reason that this committee has been engaged in this now since early August. Uh, and I, I, I don't think it's fair at this stage of our debate uh, that, that, that there should be an attempt on the part of a member of this committee to put both appointments in the one basket because they're separate and different. Chairman, I respect your integrity above all things. I've always found you very straight. But I do think Mr Fraser is on record as being adamant about process and procedures. And process and procedure is what we're talking about here. And you cannot ring fence one appointment from that day and forget about the other two. There were three appointments went before Cabinet without process and procedure that's transparent and in the public domain. And I, I, I'm sorry if that upsets you, Chairman, because I, I, I do respect your position here and I do respect the job you're trying to do. But I also understand that we cannot demonise the Zappone appointment without examining every other appointment that was made at that meeting. And I'm really sorry because, Mr Fraser, I, I believe that, as I said it, and I'm on record as saying it, I believe you would be the ideal man. Your work in Northern Ireland, your work for this country has been exceptional. I'm going to move on after a, a, a brief comment from the Secretary of the Government on the processes involved here. Uh, it seems to me that, that Senator Crockwell is forming the view that the appointment of a special envoy is exactly the same process as the appointment of an ambassador. Speak for Brief comment, Secretary of the Government. Uh, well, 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 I thank the Senator for his kind words. And, and all I can say is that you know, ambassadors are, are, are civil service roles, and it's effectively, from my point of view, a reassignment within the civil service. Uh, and um, you know, we reassign um, public servants all the time, and uh, 
you know that 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 I, I don't believe it has anything to do with the special envoy process whatsoever. I came into the civil service through a competition, and every every promotion I ever got was through a competition. Right. So. Uh, one final question, Mr. Fraser. It's in relation to the ministers, all ministers' telephones. Um, we, we, we've been asking for a while, and I was told at the Transport Committee the other day that all ministers' telephones are encrypted. The issue of Minister uh, Coveney's phone being hacked is a very serious issue. Would you regard it as being up there with a national security issue that needs investigation at the top level of cyber security in this country? I'm not sure the extent to which the Secretary of the Government can answer I, that I, question. But I do think it's an important one. I, I don't, uh, the Senator is well, well versed in these matters. Um, I, I don't know the details of that situation. Yeah. All I know is that um, I, the, matter, the matter was reported to the Cyber Security Centre, uh, to the Gardaí, as far as I know, and also to uh, national security people here, as well as the department. So I, I, I presume it's been looked at. I, I've obviously heard media reports about the incident. I, I haven't dealt with it myself. Um, but the Senator is right. It, it, it's, it's, uh, these are important issues and should be dealt with as such. Thank you very much, Mr. Fraser. Thank you, Senator. I'm sorry for any embarrassment I might have caused, but I, I felt I had to ask those questions. That's okay. That's noted, Senator Crockett. <laughs> it's okay.